G'day, it's Rob from ECT for Health. Uh, in this session, we're going to have a look at the pathophysiology of myocardial infarction, the clot that actually causes uh, what we commonly call a heart attack. Um, on the whiteboard already drawn, we've got um, essentially a cutaway of a vessel. This could be any, any blood vessel in the body, but particular to uh, a myocardial, myocardial infarction, what we're looking at is, uh, is a coronary artery. And uh, what you can see on the inside of the coronary artery here is, uh, drawn in green, is an atherosclerotic plaque. Now, we once upon a time had this understanding that atherosclerosis, or that fat that is on the inside of our arteries, um, grows on the inside of the walls of our arteries and probably developed from around about the, the middle of our teen years. We now have an understanding, particularly in our, in our westernised culture, that the fat grows on the inside of our arteries from as early as the age of three. So this is becoming a real pandemic, so to speak, this atherosclerosis. Now, to talk about what atherosclerosis is, this is where we would need to start our understanding of how a, how a heart attack actually occurs. On the inside of our blood vessels, we have a, a delicate membrane or a delicate selection of cells called endothelial tissue or endothelial cells. And these cells aren't just wallpaper on the inside of the artery. They are dynamic cells that secrete many, many substances. These cells are flexible, they're very resilient, However, they can be damaged with turbulent blood flow, with injuries to the inside of blood vessels, uh, any other tissue trauma can cause damage to this, this very delicate line of, of single cell thick endothelium. Now, to understand atherosclerosis, some of you may have remembered from the past uh, an ad that was on the TV, maybe some years ago, and the ad, um, if memory serves me correctly, was an ad for, uh, for, for anti-smoking. It was to stop smoking. And you'll recall the ad. It had a, it had a surgeon who was in an operating theatre and he pulled a, a, a blood vessel and it was thought to be an, an aorta or, or an artery out of a person's body. And he, it was very graphic. He squeezed uh, his thumb and forefinger along the artery and a big lump of fat oozed out of the artery and onto the, onto the operating table. And, 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 and it was a way of showing us the fat on the inside of our vessels. Of course, from those days, my understanding, and probably your understanding too, of how fat grows on the inside of the arteries has probably been damaged from that advertising campaign. Let's start from scratch. It wasn't an artery, it was a pig's vein to start with, and it was a combination. It wasn't fat, it was Vaseline and, and a combination of dye and Vaseline that was on the inside of that vessel. But it forever changed our thought or our understanding of fat on the inside of the artery. And one of the things that I wanted to try and do in this particular session is to dispel the myth of how fat grows on the inside of the artery. You know when you buy a good piece of steak, it's really marbled. There's no big lumps of fat on it. The fat is all through the meat. And that's exactly how the fat inside your arteries grows as well. It's not a glob of butter on the inside of the lumen of the vessel. If it was, it would be easy to fix heart attacks. You just go in there and scrape the stuff out, squeeze it out, book yourself into a surgeon every so often and squeeze the fat out. But that's not how fat grows on the arteries. The fat itself is contiguous with the muscular walls of the arteries. So if I was to change this picture and make it more correct, what we'd actually see is that this black endothelial cellular surface actually grows over the surface of these atheromas. And the atheroma is a swelling area of marbled fat, which changes the lumen size. Can you see that this atheroma here and the fat that makes up that atheroma is marbling all through the muscle itself, not just a glob of fat on the inside of the pipe. So our understanding of atheroma has to, has to start here. We have to understand that the endothelial surface, that delicate layer of cells that are normally very elastic, that sits on the lining of the inside of your arteries, when it sits over the top of a swelling area of fat or atherosclerosis, then the cells themselves become brittle and they become hard. So that's the first principle. The cells are diseased and brittle 
and not elastic like the cells on the healthy walls or, or the cells on the walls of a healthy vessel. So that's the first principle. These are diseased, easy to damage, easy to fracture blood cells, uh, uh, endothelial cells. So blood's traveling through the blood vessel. And here it is traveling its way through the blood vessel. And as blood travels through an atheromatous vessel or, or, or a blood vessel that's got this, this area of narrowing, of course, just like a whole lot of lanes of traffic having to, to go down into one lane, the blood flow literally has to slow down to fit through this narrow gap. Now, something interesting really happens when this blood exits the narrows and now comes into an area of widening. And the interesting thing is uh, it's probably best described as what happens at the beach when a wave comes in um, f into the shore. And you've been there at the beach with the bare feet and you've stood on the sand and you've, you've felt that crash of the waves that come across your, your toes and you feel the clawing of the water underneath your feet at the sand underneath your feet. And that's exactly what happens as the blood comes through the narrows and then it comes out into this wider area of the vessel. It becomes turbulent and it rolls over, much like the waves rolling over each other at the crashing of the waves on the, on, on the sand, so too the blood becomes turbu turbulent. Now we understand that blood is not just a, a red fluid, it's a soup of many, many different types of cells and proteins and, and other different chemicals. And so the effect here as blood exits and comes into this open, wider portion from this narrow atherosclerotic plaque, the, the understanding is that we get a sand blasting type effect. And that sand blasting effect normally wouldn't be too damaging or too injurious to healthy endothelium. But the endothelium that sits over the top of the atheroma is sclerosed or it's hardened. And so the atherosclerosis or the hardening of the fatty layer causes it to be brittle and it fractures and it cracks. This is where the MI starts. Now, that's the second principle. Blood normally travels through pristine pipes in a laminar flow. But as it has to go through the narrows, it becomes turbulent. And it's that turbulent flow that causes fracturing to delicate damaged endothelial tissue at the atheroma. The third principle is that within the blood, your blood is constantly trying to clot. It's constantly trying to clag up. The endothelial surfaces that I've been talking about, when healthy and intact, are constantly secreting chemicals that keep your blood liquid. If your blood was able to stay still for a period of time, hemostasis, it actually will clot. And so what happens here is that these cells that line the inside of all of your blood vessels in your body, releasing chemicals constantly, are keeping your blood from clotting and keeping your platelets from resting on the side of the wall of the artery. But that process is interrupted when this turbulent blood flow at the atheroma cracks the surface and damages these little cells. Now what we have is exposed collagen underneath that cellular layer. And collagen loves to attract platelets. So little platelets will come along, they will recognize that there was a puncture in that blood vessel wall, and they will start to proliferate. They will stick to that plaque, they will stick to that exposed, damaged area of blood vessel, and they release chemicals, platelets release chemicals that start to call their mates. And like, a a message going out to all their friends to come and join the party, all of these platelets will now flood to the area and cause, as you can see here, a complete blockage. This is called a primary platelet plug. And it doesn't take too much of a rocket scientist to figure out what's going to happen to the downstream flow of blood. If these were heart cells down at this end, and this is a, a cardiac vessel, so they'll be heart cells down at this end of the, of the vessel, it makes sense that those heart cells are not going to get their oxygen that they require to maintain normal function. That process is called ischemia. So that's the third principle. 
platelets will stick to a, a plaque or to a piece of damaged endothelium. And as a result, that damaged endothelium will be will start to clag up with this clotting process that normally doesn't happen when there is intact cells. The last piece of the puzzle is the process that we know of as coagulation. And there's a, a little video vignette on coagulation which is coming or, or you'll find up on YouTube shortly. Coagulation is a slightly different process to the clotting process. Where clotting is platelets coming together and clumping, coagulation is fibrin, which is little strands of insoluble fibres that form out of a chemical cascade that occurs within the plasma of the blood. What the fibrin will do is it will form little mesh-like networks and in a similar way to a whole bunch of sardines and where the platelets themselves might be individual sardines coming together in a clump, the fibrin acts like a fishnet and it holds together or knits together or crochets together all of these platelets and it stabilises that platelet plug and it's at that point that the process of the fibrin netting together and holding together the platelet plug, that's what we refer to as a clot. Now a piece of this clot could break off and be liberated into circulation and get stuck further downstream, therefore causing a complete blockage in a smaller vessel which then causes uh, death of that cardiac tissue. That process is the physiology that underpins a myocardial infarction. It isn't a blockage from fat, it's a blockage from a clot, but the clot was initiated because that delicate brittle wall was fractured and damaged as a result of turbulent blood flow that initiated that clotting cascade. Myocardial infarction.